praise for just all that he's doing and everything he's done for us. So we just give glory and honor to the Lord. Even right now, Lord, we thank you right now. Father God, we bless you. God. Praise we thank the you. Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. Him. So we thank and praise yeah. the Lord for everything that has gone forth on the line tonight. And now we're down to the word itself. And um, this, um, the word that the Lord has given me has been a, a meditation that he has um, has me uh, ponder on throughout this past week. Um, the word actually came last Sunday after um, we got off the line, and um, it's it's um, so it's more like a self inventory word, a word that we can look inside within ourselves and uh, check ourselves. So um, tonight we're gonna discuss the problem with self-deception. That is the word for us tonight. And I want to begin our time tonight with uh, just with these questions. And the first question is, how do you perceive yourself? When you see yourself every morning that you wake up and you look into the mirror, how do you perceive yourself? And the second question is, do you believe that the way that you see yourself it's the same way that God sees you. So I'm going to leave those two questions for um, just for you to ponder, just to think about and meditate on those two questions. And um, even as we're moving forward, amen, um, I just want to note here that our perception of ourselves can lead us into self-deception. And self-deception is the action or practice of allowing oneself to believe that a false or unvalidated feeling, idea, or situation is true, especially a one's true nature. So you're believing something false about yourself, your true self. You're not really seeing your true self. So there is a little bit, there's a bit of deception there. And a synonym for self-deception is play-acting, pretend, make-believe, as well as being self-righteous. Amen. 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 So, uh, uh, to begin us uh, to begin our our time right now, um, I just wanted to say that self-deception is referenced in the Book of Proverbs numerous times. In fact, um, there's actually two verses in Proverbs. It's actually the same. I'm going to read it. It says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I'm going to read it again. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that's found in, in Proverbs, the 14th chapter, 12th verse, as well as Proverbs, 16th chapter, and the 25th verse. This is This verse has been written twice in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 14 and 12, Proverbs 16 and 25. The, both verses read, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Think about it. Think about it. Yes. See, something to think about. Amen. In our eyes, we may Amen. see right. In our own eyes, we may seem to have it all together, but in the end, it will only lead us to a dead end or to death. My Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, Proverbs 21 and 2 says, All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. That means in our, in our own eyes, we can see ourselves right, but the Lord is always judging us. My Lord, my Lord. Yes, yes. 21 and 2. So here's a thought for all of us to keep in mind. When we see ourselves as right or righteous in our own eyes, we are now in trouble. When we see ourselves as perfect, as if we were seeing ourselves perfect in the eyes of God, we are now living in error. That's hmm. something for us to consider. Because there yes, are a lot, yes. of, a lot of people, especially a lot of Christians and believers, that believe that they're on the right path and that they are they they have right they're in right standing with the Lord when in actuality that they're not. They feel as if if I can show up to church every Sunday or if I can say all the cliches or if if I can do certain things that um, that's notable to for believers 
then the Lord would see me as righteous. But the thing, the the fact of the matter is this: that we can fool those around us some of the time, but we can never fool God, because okay. He's always that Scripture says He's always weighing our hearts. He's always yeah. judging, yeah. judging our our action. He's the one. That's why we have the gift of discernment that we're able to discern the spirit behind the things that people are saying and the things that they do. That we can discern whether it's of God or whether it's of flesh. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to uh, read the third chapter, uh, verses 9 through 11, and it reads, What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all, for we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are under the power of sin. Verse 10 says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Verse 11, there is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. So none of us on the line are righteous. All of us, we're not, we're not in a perfect place with the Lord, but because we have, we have Jesus, that's yeah. the only way that we have been made righteous. And that leads me to my next point, because we can conclude here that there's only one that is righteous, and that is Jesus. And it is because of his finished work on the cross that those who have accepted his invitation to salvation are now made righteous. And when I mean accepting his invitation, I don't mean that you just hear it and you say, well, okay, I think I believe that I'm saved. I believe that when, when, whenever um, I die that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live in heaven. Whenever judgment, the judgment day comes that, you know, the Lord is going to allow me to come in, we can't just take that for granted. We have to be sure of our salvation. We have to be sure of the, the acceptance of the invitation that God has given us through his son, Jesus. So we have to be clear on that because he is the only way that we're going to be made righteous. In fact, it says, Second Corinthians 5 and 21 says, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 So now that we have salvation, it, that doesn't mean that we are clear. We still have work to do. We still have work to, uh, to, to do in order to get ourselves in alignment with the Lord, in, a, in order to get ourselves in alignment with the Father. So Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 10, it reads, it reminds us how our thoughts and ways are not in alignment with God the Father. And it reads, it's a very familiar scripture. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So just meditating and thinking on this verse, we usually refer back to the scripture when it comes to our faith walk, when we're believing the Lord for something. And, and the Lord is saying, well, I've already done it. Now, you know, you, you're used to seeing um, whatever. If you believe in God for your healing of your physical body, you're used to uh, seeing your body in this condition. When the Lord says, I've already changed that. I've already changed your situation. Do you not perceive that's another verse in, in Isaiah that says that I'm going to do a new thing. In other words, I'm going to change this. I've already changed it. It's just up to you to get caught up in your faith and believing and knowing that your situation and your condition has changed. So usually when we are thinking of Isaiah 55, 8 through 10, we are usually thinking in that way. So he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. But I want to give you a new perspective on this verse tonight. So um, even as we are walking out our, our journey of salvation, we come to understand that what was okay for us in the past is not okay for us right now and that we need to continuously line ourselves up with the will and the way of God. And that, that way we can see and we'll know that his thoughts and our thoughts, they don't match. We'll see that our ways do not match. And, and in order for amen. us to do this, amen, in order for us to do this, we have to keep in mind how can I get over or overcome self-deception? 
How do we rid ourselves of self-deception and align ourselves with the way and the will of God? And that is found in James, the first chapter, verses 22 through 24, and explains the process to us. It reads, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Otherwise, you're deceiving yourselves. There's that word again, deceiving, deception. Be doers and not hearers only. Otherwise, you are deceiving yourselves. Verse 23, it reads, for anyone who hears the word but does not carry it out is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after observing himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. So you're reading the word. You're hearing the word every Sunday. You're reading the word every every morning that you wake up and you read a scripture and then you close the close your Bible and you go about your day. Then what has happened? You have forgotten what you've read. You have not measured yourself to this word. You have not aligned yourself to this word. So you're like the person that will look at himself in the mirror and say, oh, okay, I think I'm okay. And then you walk away and you forget everything that you saw in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is saying, this is the problem that we have with self-deception, is that we cannot just see ourselves in the mirror, which is the word of the Lord, but now we have to take the word. We have to stay in the word of God, not just read the Amen. word to say that I read a scripture that, today, but take the word, dissect it, and apply it to your life and your relationship with the Lord. And another thing, if we are part of a good Bible-based, spirit-filled ministry, then we don't, then instead of just screaming and shouting during church, we should just take the time just to take in the word, apply the word. Amen. Even as we're doing our personal study, every time you take the word and you apply it, you will see how ugly your spirit is. You will see what's not in place, what's not in alignment. And sometimes if when the Lord begins to reveal and show you yourself, sometimes it just brings you to your knees. But all we can do is just take that word and apply it to ourselves, apply it to our situation, and then begin to fix ourselves up with the word because we already have the answer. We already have the antidote that we need in order for us to fix what the Lord wants to fix inside of us. Amen. 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 So what can Amen. we say against our self-deception? That is, our own grandiose opinions, opinion of ourselves and how we determine how we see, how we should live our lives will always end in death. We need to keep that in mind, that if we don't change our, if we don't change our ways, we don't change our attitude, that this thing called self-deception will lead us into a, a dead end. And we don't. Oh yes. We will. We want to walk with the one that gives us life, and the yes. best way, and the best one to walk it out with is with Jesus Himself. Amen. So, man, I wanted to. Um, that was my word for tonight, and I pray that this word that it was a blessing that it encouraged, that it gave you a new perception of how we should uh, how we should live our lives abundantly and not just get stuck in one place. My Lord, my Amen. Lord. Amen. Because our journey, our spiritual walk, it's, it's a process. No one on this line is perfect. No one on this line has made it. Some of us have, we, some of us have been... Um, been here for a while. We've walked this. We've walked with the Lord for for a while, but we still, even from the youngest to the oldest, we still have a lot to learn in Him. Yeah. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead and end our time tonight with prayer. Um, probably like a minute or so, if someone would have a a testimony or um, if you would like to share something, then we have one minute that you can share. I want to thank everyone who um, thought it was not robbery to join us on the line tonight. For those who continuously pray for the Conform to His Image prayer gathering, even for those that have sown uh, financially into this ministry, I want to thank you. And also, I'm also praying that the Lord continue to bless you as well. So if there's anyone that would like to share on the line tonight, you can do so right now. Everything but fail. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. The boys, that's Ohio. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise heaven. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, yes. Thank God. Thank Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I enjoyed everything what was said and done. It was so touching. You give me something to feed on the rest of the week. God bless you, and I love you all. Sister Kelly. All right. God bless you. God Thank bless you. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we're going to begin. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and end with prayer right now. So um, let's go ahead and, and close out with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now, Father God, for just being in our midst right now, Lord. We pray, Father God, that even as we leave this line, Lord, that your word has landed on good soil. Father God, that you continue, you continue, Lord, just to water the word, continue to add the increase. We pray, Father God, for visitations throughout this week, Lord, that you will continue just to visit your people, encourage them and strengthen them, minister this word into them right now, allow for them to feast on it and to grow from it and mature, Father God, from this word right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for blessing our going in and our coming out. Father God, even as your word says, we're blessed going in, we're blessed uh, going out. And even so, Lord, you're covering our footsteps. You're, you're blessing every atmosphere that we will go uh, encounter this week right now, Lord. You're in the midst. You've already gone before us. We pray for healing, deliverance, salvation throughout this week. Even, Father God, for those who are connected to us, those who have, are going through bereavement right now, God, we pray, Lord, that you give them comfort, God. You give them your peace. Father God, that you would provide for them right now. We thank you right now, Lord, that you be glorified and honored. Cover us and keep us in the name of Jesus, and we thank and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a blessed week in the Lord. Amen.